This week, we are going to be working with summary queries. And basically, for those of you who are uh, familiar with Microsoft Excel, the summary queries are similar to functions in Excel. Uh, they let you count items or calculate uh, averages or the maximum or the minimum in a numeric column. So you're going to start by reading the chapter in the book and then going through the lecture demo. And the popular aggregate functions, as I kind of just mentioned, are count, sum, max, min, and average. Okay? And how they work is similar in concept to what you would see in Microsoft Excel. Uh, the difference here is that we are looking at values that are in a particular column. And so the way that you would set this up, and I have lots of examples, is you'd start with select, and then you'd have your aggregate. Okay, so whether it's sum or count, max, min, uh, and then in parentheses, you give it the column that you are interested in looking at. Okay, and then you have to tell it from, followed by the table. And then if you want to limit the values that it looks at within the column, you would add the where clause. So here's a little example. Uh, if I have a product table, uh, I can find the smallest or the lowest price using min. Okay, And then when you use the aggregates, when you see the results, the column does not have a heading. So you typically will use a little alias, uh, which provides a heading for your column. So we can take a look at this little interactive example here. We can run it, and you can see that we our column now has a heading, and it's just retrieved the smallest price out of all of the rows in that particular table. And it looks like there's 77 different products, so this is the lowest one. And then if we wanted to see the average price, we can change this. and run it. And so maybe we want to see some other information from product. So temporarily here, we'll just select everything. Okay, so now that we can see the product name, that might be useful. So why don't we do product name And then we'll do the maximum of price. And then we'll do the minimum of price. And then we'll do the average. And actually that's not very useful because this probably is not it for everything. So let's get rid of product name because that's not very useful in this case. And could even do a count. count of price. So how many is it looking at? Oops, it does not like that. Okay, this you probably won't have a problem running this <laughs> at home, but sometimes this uh, interactive thing is a little fussy. Oh, maybe it doesn't like the hashtag. Let's see. 
Yep, that was what it didn't like. Okay, so you guys kind of get the idea here. So we've got min, which looks at all of the values and returns the smallest. We have max, which looks at all of the values and returns the largest. We have count, uh, which just looks at uh, the column and counts the number of items. And I should show you, um, and it, it is kind of a weird thing that you can do. Hopefully it won't bomb on here. But um, for max and min and count, you can actually look at alphabetic columns. And so I think we had product name. Obviously for some and average, uh, there's no way you could do that on text, but it should work. for max, min, and count. Yep, so it went and um, looked at them in alphabetical order. And the one that was at the bottom was this one. Uh, in alphabetical order, the name that was on the top was this one and then the total number of names is here. And the reason I'm showing you this is um, that one of your assignments is going to be to make up your own queries and you are going to be doing the aggregates on your term project. And some of you may not have a lot of numeric columns, but you can see you can still use max, min, and count on any type of column, it does not have to be a number. Uh, so I've kind of shown you how to use these <laughs> already. And, and so um, you'll find that these are kind of fun queries. They are not difficult to use at all. Um, and again, if you wanted to limit what it was looking at, you can add the where clause to it. So here, we'll, we'll try it on this one. So this is averaging the price in products. And we can say where the price is greater than 50. Okay, so that's the average when the price is above 50. And then let's remove that to see what it is for all the products. Okay, so you can see that the average is quite a bit higher if we are limiting to those over 50 a 28 versus 105. Uh, the sum, all this does is it adds everything in the column. And so if we go back over here, instead of average, I can put in sum. And that's everything that is in the price column. And then I could also limit Okay, so that's all of the products that are over 50 added together. And then here's another one where it's looking at uh, quantity greater than 20 and price greater than 200. Um, and we are actually totaling two different things. So, you know, lots and lots of examples here for you guys to look at. And then we get into group by clause. So when you use aggregates, if you decide that you want to display a column that you are not performing an aggregate function on, that is where you have to have the group by clause. Okay, and so this is where it gets a little bit more complicated because you were probably thinking, oh, this is so simple. Well, it is simple, <laughs> but <laughs> there's always a but. Um, it does get a tad more complicated if you want to include columns where you're not doing any kind of aggregate. So in this little example, if we wanted to cut, count the customers and list the country 
um, that they're from, then uh, we're gonna group it by country. So that will give us all of the customers in each country. And if you forget to put in group by, so let's say you have your aggregate and you want other columns and you forget to include them in the group by, uh, you will get an error. Okay, so let us take a look at this one. So we want the customers and we want them for each country. So we have to do a group by country. And so that will give us the total for each country. And then let's say, hopefully they have city because I did not check. We'll see. Let's say I wanted to do city and country, okay? And I don't have an aggregate on either one, then in my group by, I need to include city and country down here. And that was a good guess. <laughs> so as the city and country change, then uh, it's gonna give us a different total. And a lot of these totals are one, but you, if you scroll down, you'll notice that you've got more people in London. Okay, so when the city and the country change, uh, that's what's triggering the total. Okay, and then let's say you wanted to sort it different. So we've got the aggregate, we've got additional columns. And if we have additional columns, we have to do group by, but let's say we don't like how it's sorting. Okay, in fact, we'd rather have it sort by country, okay, instead of city. So in an aggregate, We can use order by. And that should work. But in an aggregate, uh, we can't really use the where clause. It's not going to work on our result set. So if we not only want to order by country, but let's say we want, um, Oh, only, oh, let's see, only Germany. We've got quite a few from there. Okay, so instead of doing a where clause, in an aggregate, you have to use having. Okay, and then that will limit what you see. I could say Germany or country. I wanted to see more. And then you would see it sorted too. Okay, so in an aggregate, anytime you have additional columns that you're not going to have an aggregate function on, you have to include the group by. And you also um, need to use the having clause if you want to filter the results, okay? You use having instead of where, okay? And so here is kind of the format for this. So you've got your select and you've got your from, and then if you're going to have multiple tables, you've got your join. You can have a where condition. Um, and that will affect what gets into the result set from the tables. You must have a group by if you're going to have columns that don't have aggregates. And if you want to filter the end result, then you have to use the having clause. And finally, if you want to sort, you have to use order by. Okay, so here is uh, more examples on the having clause. The key thing to remember is that it is applied to rows after they have been grouped. 
So the difference between having and where. Uh, where is a filter that determines what gets into the result set. Having is applied to that result set and it determines what you see. And you will not use group by or having unless you have an aggregate. Okay, so these are only used with aggregates. Okay, so here is another example. So here we've got, uh, we're just counting up the customers and we're listing countries. So we have to have a group by. Um, and then we only want to see customers or countries that have more than five customers basically is what that is saying. Now you may be thinking, well, can I put a where in here? Um, you only would put a where in here if you wanted to filter what is pulled in from the initial select. So the where has to go ab above your group by and your having. And um, we'll just do customer IDs that are greater than 20. Okay, and so this is everything. Now let's run this. And you can see the numbers changed. In fact, I think we lost a country. So let me comment this out. Okay, so we've got three eights and a 13 and we've only got four countries. Let's run it with the comment. Okay, so now we have five countries and the numbers change and you can see, um, I think we lost UK last time. Let's run it again. Yep, we did. Okay, so if you are going to have a where clause, it actually filters things before they get down to group by and having. Okay, and then having is going to filter, you know, what you see here. So if I comment out having, we could see different results. Let me comment out having and keep our where. Yep, lots of different results because now um, I'm seeing all of the customer IDs. So I know it's kind of hard to tell this looking at the run, but what the where is doing is it's filtering the results set because all we are grouping and all we're filtering with having are the customers that are greater than, with an ID of greater than 20, okay? And where, so this determines all of the data that we see, and then this groups that data, and this affects what gets displayed. So if we turn that on, it's gonna impact what gets displayed. So that is what the having does. And there are lots and lots of examples for you guys to take a look at. Uh, the extension section is optional. In fact, I am going to mark it optional. <laughs> uh, when you come over here, you will notice that um, there is an extra credit assignment on SQL Server extensions. And the reason that I made it optional is because an extension is not universal. This is a SQL Server extension, so it applies only to SQL Server. If you use any other SQL application, like MySQL, which is very popular, these commands will not exist. Now, does that mean we're not going to use them? Um, some of the commands are quite nice, and so we will be using them um, in upcoming weeks. Uh, one of the things that you can do is you can get totals. 
using these commands. And so it is nice to be aware of them. In fact, um, here we've got an aggregate. And when you see count asterisk, that means count everything. And uh, we've got actually a couple different aggregates. Uh, we also have columns that do not have an aggregate. So you know you're gonna have a group by. So it's gonna group the data based on state and name. And what with rollup does is it gives you totals. So that is kind of nice. Uh, with cube also gives totals. They're just a little different type of total. Grouping sets do the same thing. And the over clause uh, is just another way to break down data and get totals. So we will be using some of these in upcoming weeks. But I do encourage you to do the extra credit because it'll give you practice with those now. These are not commands that you will see on your certification because they are extensions of the SQL Server language. They are not part of Transact SQL, which is the standard. So and that in a nutshell is what we're gonna be working on this week. And then we have the textbook assignment uh, where you guys are going to be learning to apply these different queries. Okay, and there'll be several different examples that you're going to be keying in just to get you used to working with them. And I've kind of stuck by the basic commands here. Uh, so you're not gonna be seeing the extensions of the language in the textbook assignment. If you would like to work with those extensions, they are in this assignment down here. It's separate and I made it extra credit. It's set up the same way as all your other assignments. So I really don't think you guys are gonna have any trouble kind of walking through this, but you will see how that totaling works. And I do think there's some value in that, which is why I've given you extra credit for it. Uh, after you finish your textbook assignment, we are going to start our project three milestone. Uh, this milestone is our last milestone, but it has three different parts to it. So aggregate functions is part one. Okay, and uh, for the aggregate functions, you are gonna create four aggregate queries for data within your term project tables. You cannot just use count by itself in all four. What I want you to do is use the different aggregate functions. And I showed you how to use max and min with text columns, okay? So, Count, max, and min can be used with any of your text columns. So all of you will be able to come up with four and they do not have to be complicated, okay? Um, I did some more complex queries here with uh, joins, but you do not have to do a join with yours, okay? You can just do them very, very simple if you would like. Okay, so it is totally up to you how you do it. Um, if you have a table with um, a price column, if you wanna do one query where you do a sum of the prices, that's fine. If you wanna do a second query where you average the prices, that is fine, okay? So totally up to you what you do here. Uh, then when you're done with that script, you're going to submit it. And that is it as far as the required assignments go. I already mentioned the extra credit. The other thing that I have here is just uh, something for you to test your own knowledge. Uh, it is a Jeopardy game. And so uh, you are your own team. Uh, 
if, if I do this in class, I can actually break the class into teams, but this is online. So you guys are a team of one. <laughs> so um, this works just like regular Jeopardy. Uh, so if you go in here and let's say you go for the big money, eliminates transitive dependencies. So the answer would be what is third normal form? So here we go. Yep, that is the correct response. I can give myself some points and continue. Okay, and so then uh, you can go ahead and continue on testing yourself, giving yourself some points. Okay, so hopefully you'll have fun with this and it'll be a nice little refresher. Uh, if you run into any problems this week or if you have questions, please let me know and have an awesome week.